Welcome, and thank you for joining me for this World Skills Master Cam tutorial series, Machining Your Part. Last episode, we went over the process for roughing the part. In this episode, join me as we walk through creating the necessary finishing operations for the first side. First, let's turn off the display toolpath motion to make it easier to change geometry. Use the Select All Dirty Operations icon to quickly deselect the completed toolpaths. Now, toggle the only display selected toolpath switch on. Only when we have an operation in the toolpaths manager selected will the toolpath motion be displayed on the screen. Now, let's create a contour to finish the outside. This can be found under the 2D gallery. In the chaining dialog box, select Solid Selection and set the mode to C plane. With the loop function automatically highlighted, select the bottom loop of the model. Notice the direction of the green arrow. This indicates the direction of the toolpath. Use the reverse option, if needed, to change the direction. On the tool page, select the 6mm flat end mill and go into the cut parameters page. Make sure the stock to leave is set to zero. Because the tool's cutting length is not long enough, we will need to enable depth cuts for the finishing toolpath. Turn on depth cuts and set the maximum rough step down to 10 millimeters. Then select the keep tool down checkbox. Now go into the linking parameters to set the values. For retract, use absolute 50 millimeters. For top of stock, set to absolute zero. For the feed plane and depth, leave those set to incremental. Incremental values are relative to the chain geometry. So in this instance, the tool will convert from the rapid feed rate to the plunge feed rate at 10 millimeters above the chain geometry. With the depth being set to incremental zero, it is cutting to the geometry's depth. Since the roughing operation went two millimeters deeper, let's change the depth from zero to negative two incremental to account for that. Once that is done, select OK to generate the toolpath. Now, create another contour, this time for the slot. With solid selection in the loop method highlighted, grab the bottom of the slot. Keep in mind the direction of the arrow. Select OK to exit the chaining dialog box and enter the contour toolpath page. Select the 6mm flat end mill in the tool page, then go to the cut parameters page to make sure the stock to leave is set to zero. Since depth cuts are enabled from the previous contour toolpath, move down to turn the option off. Since the slot is narrow, let's investigate the lead and lead out page to manipulate the entry and exit motion. On the entry side, change the line length and arc radius to 25%. Next, enter a helix height of 0.2 millimeters. Use the arrows in the middle of the page to populate the changes in the exit values. This will ensure the safe tool motion entering and exiting the slot. Under the linking parameters page, select feed plane and then on the geometry, select the midpoint on the slot's vertical wall. Set the top of stock to absolute and grab the top of the pocket depth. Notice that the depth height kept a negative two millimeter value from the previous contour toolpath. Since the bottom of the slot was chained for toolpath selection, set the value to incremental zero. Select OK to generate the toolpath. Now, finish the center hole at the bottom of the pocket. Under the 2D gallery, expand the list, then select the circle mill toolpath under the hole making category. In the toolpath hole definition function panel, be sure to select the center of the hole. Select OK to exit the function panel and enter the circle mill toolpath page. Under the tool page, select the six millimeter flat end mill. Moving down to the cut parameters page, set the stock to leave on the walls and floors to zero millimeters. On the finish page, select the semi-finished checkbox, then change the number and spacing as needed. Also, select the Keep Tool Down checkbox to prevent the tool from retracting out of the hole in between the semi-finish and finished tool passes. Lastly, the linking parameters page. Set the retract to absolute 50 millimeters. Then, change the depth to absolute and enter negative 24 millimeters. This is the same depth as our OptiRest toolpath that roughed out the center hole originally. Select OK to generate the toolpath. 
Next, we can finish the floor and walls of the inner diameter. For this application, go to the 2D gallery and select Pocket. In the Chaining dialog box, using the Solid Selection and Loop function, grab the bottom of the pocket on the model. Select OK to exit the Chaining dialog box and enter the Pocket Toolpath page. Select the 6mm flat end mill on the tool page. Under the Cut Parameters page, set the stock to leave to zero for the walls and floors. Since there was stock to leave on the floors from the OptiRough and OptiRest toolpaths, we will need to use the roughing page. In here, select the cutting method for the pocket floor. These options handle a variety of different shapes and some options work better than others. Let's select a parallel spiral clean corners. Moving down to the finishing page, make sure finish is turned on. Then select finish outer boundary and keep tool down. Along to the linking parameters page. Use the top of stock button to select the midpoint of the wall. Select OK to generate the pocket toolpath. Well, that's all the time we have for this episode. Thank you for joining me and be sure to continue the series as we begin to apply hole making operations next.